Hello students. So in the previous class, we people have seen the process of uh, hydrophilic nature. That is how the pollination is going to occur inside the water. That is the hydrophilic nature. In the previous class, we people have seen. In the today's class, we are going to see the process of varieties of animals that how they are involved in the process of pollination. what type of animals are involved in the process of pollination that we are going to see in the today's class so majority of the animals like bees see here majority of the animals like bees wasps bees wasps moths flies beetles beetles etc they are the variety of animals which are attracting towards the flower and they are bringing the process of pollination they are attract act, attracting towards the flower and they are bringing the pollination not only these animals apart from this we are also seeing the primates like gecko lizard and garden lizard gecko lizard and garden lizard even the birds like sun birds and humming birds sun birds and humming birds even the birds also the arboreal animals arboreal animals arboreal animals like tree dwelling rodents we can say tree dwelling rodents tree dwelling rodents even the so here uh, the primates we are going to see and also reptiles so these are the reptiles these are the reptiles reptiles like uh, gecko lizard and the garden lizard primates like lemurs lemurs primates like lemurs these are the examples okay these are the variety of examples which are carrying the process of pollination in variety of the flowers these are the variety of examples which are carrying the process of pollination in variety of the flowers if these animals if the animals are attracted by the flowers then only there is a possibility of the pollination if the animals are attracted by the flowers then only there is a possibility of the pollination we are going to say the students the flowers what they will do to attract the animals see flowers are producing flowers has to produce some rewards flowers has to produce some rewards to attract the animals flowers has to produce some rewards to attract the animals now what type of rewards are produced by the flower to attract the animals for example the very first character is the flower should have attractive color the flower should have attractive color they should have the fragrance they should have the fragrance fragrance they should have then odors they should have okay so these are the rewards which are produced by the flower to attract the insects not only this some of the flowers are very rich in nectar the some of the flowers are very rich in nectar and attracting that nectar the insects are going to attract the flower okay seeing that nectar the ins insects are going to attract the flower and then they are bringing the process of pollination see these are the rewards produced by the flowers to attract the animals what are the rewards here flowers should be attractive 
the color of the flower should be very high very rich okay and the fragrance should have the, the flowers should have the very uh, uh, pleasant the fragrance and the odor foul odor we can say and also the flowers should produce the nectars which is going to attract the animals the students here these are all insects like bees wasps moths flies beetles all these are the insects the insect pollinated flowers the insect pollination is the dominating one insect pollination is the dominating pollination among the varieties of the animals insect pollination is dominating pollinate now what, what is the meaning of the dominating poll pollination that means most of the pollination in the angiosperms occurs by the insects see domination means what most of the pollination in the angiosperms occurs by the insects so that is why we will say that insect pollination is the dominating pollination in the angiosperms and here apart from that also we are going to see the primates reptiles even birds birds like sun birds and the humming birds are attracting towards the odor of the flower they are not attracting towards the color of the flower but they are attracting towards the odor of the flower and they are coming and sitting over the flower and then they are bringing the after sitting that flower they go to another flower then the process of pollination is going to occur there okay they take the pollen grain in the mouth and they just go to the another uh, flower and they sit over the flower there and the pollen grain is released on the stigma then we can see the process of pollination there got so these are the few points what you have to remember apart from the pollinating agents like carotidophily malacophily myrmecophily entomophily zoophily so these are the some extra points what you have to remember and i uh, hope so you have understood this points okay see i have told you majority of the pollination occurs by the uh, animals in the angiosperms particularly that too by the insects insects insect pollination is the dominating pollination in the angiosperms and uh, here we can see bees wasps moths flies beetles etc and the uh, primates like lemurs reptiles like gecko lizard and the garden lizard and birds like sun birds and humming birds and arboreal animals like tree dwelling animals we can say that means always they are going to survive on the tree okay they are called as what arboreal animals and they are carrying the process of pollination so i have told you that among them the insect pollination is the dominating one so here uh, to attract the insects the flowers has to produce some rewards to the insects and to the other animals like what rewards the flower should have attractive color the flowers should have the fragrance then odor they should have and the also they should produce the nectar okay now to understand this mechanism we have to see an example like amorphophallus amorphophallus is the largest flower amorphophallus is the largest flower which brings about 6 feet high okay amorphophallus 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 is the largest flower which brings about 6 feet high is is helping for laying the eggs some of the animals lay the eggs <coughs> some of the animals lay the eggs in the flower some of the animals lay the eggs in the flower they feel safe the the birds especially the birds and the other animals they feel safe by that by the laying the eggs inside this uh, flower or the just eggs will be safe and even the flowers are going to uh, some of the flowers are not going to uh, complete their life cycle without these eggs okay without this process even you can see the example like uh, moth and the echa plant okay moth and the uh, y u w c a echa plant okay see 
the moth releases the eggs in the ovary of the flower the moth releases the eggs in the ovary of the flower and in turn and in turn flowers and in turn flowers are producing in turn flowers are producing the nectars to the moth flowers are producing the nectars to the moth okay that means the pollen grains are the in the form of nectars and as the egg converts into the larvae as the egg converts into the larvae it is uh, flying from the ovary and the ovule is converting into the seed and ovule is converting into the seed ovule is converting into the seed so without this that means both are dependent on each other both are dependent on each other see insect is depending on the flower and flower is depending on the insect insect what it will do it will lay the egg in the flower what the flower is going to produce it is going to produce nectar to the insects and as the eggs are converted into a larvae it is going to fly from the ovary and the ovule present in the ovary ovule present in the ovary is converting into a seed ovule present in the ovary is converting into a seed so eggs are released in the ovary we are going to say in the ovary the space present in the ovary already i have told you the space present in the ovary the space present in the ovary is called as locule the space present in the ovary is called as locule and inside the locule when the eggs are converted into a larvae that larvae are going to fly from the locule or the ovary and the ovule present in that is converting into the seed hope so you have understood this concept okay apart from the pollinating agents we are also seeing some extra points like majority see once again i'll repeat the concept concentrate on my words majority of the animals are carrying the process of pollination in the angiosperms majority of the animals are carrying the process of pollination in the angiosperms apart from that apart from the majority of the animals insects are the dominating one that means most of the angiospermic flowers most of the angiospermic flowers they carry the process of pollination by the insects what they will do they carry the process of pollination by the insects so insects like here we are going to see bees bees we are going to see moths we are going to see okay then wasps we are going to see then beetles flies all these are the examples flies etc all these are the examples of the insects which are carrying the process of pollination up uh, to attract the insects what the flowers are going to give the rewards that is the flowers are having a high attractive color they should have the fragrance they should have the foul odor they should have the just uh, 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 what to say uh, odor uh, fragrance and attractive color and large shape see birds are not going to attract the flower by the uh, uh, color and the attra- uh, what to say fragrance but here the large shape of the flower is going to attract the bird the so birds are sun birds and the humming birds are the examples we are going to see here so i was telling the insect dominated flowers are the so insect pollen uh, dominating uh, pollination is going to occur in the most of the angiosperms so apart from that i also told you about the sun birds and the humming birds apart from that i have also told you about the sun birds and the 
hummingbirds and apart from that primates like lemurs are the reptiles like gecko lizard and the garden lizard is there so they are all the animals even the bats bats are also the process of uh, uh, the uh, process of carrying the pollination in case of angiosperms so like this we can give so many example here to carry on the process of pollination and uh, the even some of the insects they are uh, not completing their life cycle without depending on the plant body just i told you about the moth and the echo plant so moth are going to release the eggs in the locule of the ovary so what is mean what is the meaning of the locule i have told you in the previous class only that is the space present in the ovary is called as locule and uh, here the moth is going to release the eggs in them and uh, the flower in turn what is it is going to produce it is going to give the nutrition to the insect so as they are dependent on each other so as the, they are getting the nutrition they are uh, larvae present in the ovary that is the egg is converted into a larvae and that larvae when it is coming out of, out of the ovary the ovule is converting into a seed so this completes the life cycle of the moth and the echo plant both okay so this is the best example to show the process of pollination that how they are carrying in the flower okay so this is the conclusion of one concept okay this is the conclusion of the one concept that uh, uh, varieties of animals are used for the process of pollination now next concept what we are going to see is pollen pistil interaction what is the next concept here pollen pistil interaction now students pollen pistil interaction means what that we are going to understand in the next concept pollen pistil interaction now to understand this mechanism once again you have to just remember the previous classes the very first class is like uh, structure of pollen grain you have to remember structure of pollen grain you have to remember then structure of gynoecium you have to remember structure of gynoecium and even structure of ovule also you have to remember structure of ovule also you have to remember now just a brief revision will do here pollen is nothing but a male gametophyte pollen is nothing but a male gametophyte where we are going to see the presence of vegetative cell which is very larger and small generative cell vegetative cell which is very larger and the small generative cell even there is a presence of vacuole and a dense cytoplasm <coughs> even there is a presence of vacuole and the dense cytoplasm and here we are going to see the presence of two layers that is outer exine and the inner indine outer exine and the inner in time so this diagram you may remember in the previous classes what we have seen so here two types of cells one is called as vegetative cell other one is called as generative cell and also presence of two layers one is called as exine other one is called as in time even we are going to see the presence of dense cytoplasm what we are going to see dense cytoplasm and also we are going to see the presence of vacuole well this is the main structure of the pollen grain and this pollen grain is undergoing that is the generative cell undergoes mitotic cell division generative cell undergoes mitotic cell division produces the two cells one is called as tube nucleus produces the two cells one is called as tube nucleus and the other one is called as generative nucleus and remember students 
wherever there is a presence of the nucleus compulsory we can we have to see the process of division there one is called as tube nucleus and the other one is called as generative nucleus generative nucleus undergoes once again the mitotic division undergoes mitotic division and produces two male gametes what they are going to produce they are going to produce the two male gametes this is the process of which will undergo in the process in the pollen grain now imagine imagine that the uh, generative cell is uh, uh, undergoing the process of mitotic cell division and produces the tube nucleus and the generative nucleus imagine that generative nucleus also undergo mitotic cell division produces the two male gametes okay now what now when the see here see here when the pollen grain when the pollen grain is just sitting on the stigma when the pollen grain is just sitting on the stigma inside this we can see the process of uh, we will draw a small uh, inverted ovule here a small inverted ovule will draw here see here this is the inverted ovule and uh, here in the embryo sac will uh, just uh, draw a small small set, uh, cells like uh, antipodal cells central polar nuclei egg and the synergies so this diagram you are very well be familiar with this diagram in the previous class okay see when the pollen grain is sitting on the stigma or we can say there is a landing of the pollen grain on the stigma we will use this word there is a landing of the pollen grain on the stigma when the pollen grains land on the stigma when the pollen grains are landing on the stigma the germination process occurs now students germination process where it occurs in the when means in the pollen grain wherever there is a absence of sporopollenin you have remember this point wherever there is an absence of sporopollenin that particular part is called as germ pore okay that particular part is called as what germ pore when this germ pore when this uh, germ pore absorbs the water from the stigma it swells and there is a release of the pollen tube okay the, the pollen grain is landing on the stigma it absorbs the water from the stigma and just it is producing the pollen tube what it is producing it is producing the pollen tube now students this occurs in various ways see in some of the species in some of the plant bodies the pollen grains are shedding at two cell stage only the pollen grains are shedding at two cell stage as the pollen grains sit on the stigma at that time generating nucleus starts dividing okay and it start uh, generative cell starts dividing and it is going to divide as the pollen tube uh, it is going to divide and uh, as the generative tube nucleus and the generative nucleus is produced here tube nucleus starts traveling here and the generative nucleus produces two male gametes followed by the tube nucleus see here generative nucleus uh, this is the tube nucleus which is making a way for the uh, uh, pollen tube to enter it to reach to the mouth of the ovule and will behind the tube nucleus the two male gametes will be traveling and behind this there is a presence of the vegetative cell behind this there is a presence of the vegetative cell okay so this is in some species in some species what happens the pollen grains are germinating on the stigma at the two cell stage only in majority of the species the pollen grains are germinating on the stigma at the three cell stage in the exam they may ask the question what is the two cell stage and what is the three cell stage so two cell stage means presence of the vegetative cell and the generative cell that is the two cell stage what is the three cell stage here the presence of vegetative cell generative nucleus and the tube nucleus presence of vegetative cell tube nucleus and the generative 
nucleus presence of vegetative cell tube nucleus and the generative nucleus so in some of the species in some of the plant species the pollen grain is just falling on the stigma and starts germinating immediately why because already there is a presence of three cells there okay already there is a presence of three cell over there so this uh, three cell pollen grain starts germinating on the stigma and the pollen tube starts traveling through the style and just reach to the mouth of the ovule they just reach to the mouth of the ovule so this is called as what the pollen crystal interaction now problem comes here why because pollen grains are not at all suitable to all the flowers all the pollen grains are not suitable for all the flowers stigma and all the stigma are not suitable for all the pollen grains whenever there is a matching of the chemical components of the stigma and the pollen grain then only the process of germination is going to occur whenever there is a matching of the pollen grain and the stigma then only we are going to see matching of the chemical components of the pollen grain and the stigma then only we are going to see the presence of fertilization and the uh, traveling of the pollen tube through the stipe see what type of chemicals should be there here what type of chemical should be there here the boron is the first chemical component in the mineral nutrition concept you people have seen that uh, essential elements for growth of the plant body boron is the first chemical component which is required uh, by the stigma or the what to say for the compatibility for the matching of the stigma and the pollen grain boron then next is amino acids that is you can say even proteins also carbohydrates especially amino acids boron carbohydrates and lipids these are the chemical components these are the chemical components which should match with each other okay then only we are going to see that the pollen grain is attracting to the stigma okay so this concept if they are attracting if they are helping if they are germinating then this concept is called as pollen pistil interaction what we will call pollen pistil interaction getting my point oh. so here once again two points you have to remember one is called as compatibility one is called as compatibility other one is called as incompatibility what is other one here it is another one is called as incompatibility so compatibility means matching of the chemical components of the pollen grain and the stigma that is called as compatibility incompatibility means the pollen grain is failing to germinate on the stigma the pollen grain is failing to germinate on the stigma due to various reasons maybe the maturation does not occur maybe the chemical component is not matching okay maybe the pollen grain is of different species and the stigma is of different species various reason will be there for this concept okay various reason will be there so two terms you are going to see compatibility and the incompatibility so compatibility means matching of the pollen grain and the stigma that is called as what compatibility incompatibility means the chemical sorry the pollen grain is not going to germinate on the stigma due to various reason it may be the uh, mismatching of the chemical components it may be that uh, pollen grain is of uh, from the different species and the stigma is from different species and uh, maybe the unsuitable condition also even the temperature the humidity the atmospheric condition is also uh, should be favorable for this uh, uh, process to occur okay so this is the concept of the pollen crystal interaction so i have told you already the structure of the pollen grain and also how the uh, stigma is uh, going to get the pollen grain from the pollen tube so gynoecium uh, structure is this one only we have seen the stigma this one is the style and this one is the ovary inside the ovary we can see there is a presence of the ovule so this one is the stigma 
and this one is the style and this one is the ovary and inside the ovary we are going to see the process of ovule what we are going to see we are going to see the process of ovule now here students traveling of the pollen tube through the style reaching to the surface of the ovule mouth of the ovule see traveling of the pollen tube so traveling of pollen tube reach uh, through the style through the style reaching to the mouth of the ovule reaching to the mouth of the ovule reaching to the mouth of the ovule is called as siphonogamy remember this point it is important for one mark siphonogamy traveling of the pollen tube through the style reaching to the mouth of the ovule is called as siphonogamy if the pollen tube if the pollen tube reaches to the sorry if the pollen tube enters or enters through the style sorry enters enters through the micropyle through the micropyle it is called as it is called as porogamy it is called as porogamy it is also very important if the entry of the pollen tube occurs through the micropyle see if it is going through the micropyle it is called as porogamy the entry of the pollen tube entry of pollen tube occurs through chalaza occurs through chalaza chalaza is nothing but the base of the ovary occurs through chalaza it is called as it is called as chalazogamy what do we call chalazogamy if the entry of the pollen tube occurs through chalaza it is called as chalazogamy if the entry of the pollen tube occurs through the if the entry of the pollen tube if the entry of the pollen tube occurs through integuments occurs through integuments it is called as it is called as mesogamy it is called as mesogamy remember this points okay you have to remember this points what is chalazogamy the entry of the pollen tube occurs through chalaza if the pollen tube enters from the chalaza inside the embryo sac it is called as chalazogamy if the pollen tube enters through the integuments it is called as mesogamy and if the pollen tube is entering through the micropyle it is called as porogamy and the traveling of the pollen tube through the style it is called as siphonogamy got students so this is the concept of the pollen pistil interaction so what in the today's class we have seen the pollen pistil interaction and also the other concept like animals so how they carry the process of pollination so in the pollen pistil interaction we have to see that the chemical nature of the pollen grain and the stigma should match with each other then only we can say that it is the compatibility if the chemical is not matching then it leads to the incompatibility that means it is not going to germinate on the stigma okay so this is the concept of the today's class so you have to remember the terms like siphonogamy porogamy chalazogamy mesogamy okay